Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, but first, listen to this performance report on heavy-duty RPM motor oil. Taxi cabs operated by Tanner Motor Tours of Las Vegas, Nevada, used to average only 35,000 miles between overhauls. Today, with heavy-duty RPM, the same cabs travel 100,000 miles before overhauling. Heavy-duty RPM, developed through atomic energy, tested in laboratories and on the road, compared with premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, more than doubles engine life, time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Get complete protection for your car. Get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station, where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. It happened on Friday, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I might tell you that I'm writing this letter because I'm highly patriotic. I might say I'm writing because I want to see my husband in more trouble than he's already in. Neither would be true. I happen to love my husband, and I want him brought back to the United States alive. If you and your assistant are prepared to take a rather lengthy trip, please call on me on receipt of this letter, and I will explain what cannot be put in writing. Yours sincerely, Lois Craig. Well, Mrs. Craig, your letter was a little confusing. Yes, I realized that after I'd written it. You, uh, you said you wanted your husband brought back alive. Just where is he? Oh, Miss Brooks, have you ever heard of Friday's Island? Why, yes, it's in the Pacific somewhere, isn't it? Yes, that's right. One of a cluster of islands in the general direction of Tahiti. And, uh, that's where he is? Yes. You see, Stanley and I were on a vacation by air in the South Pacific... On the way home, our plane landed on Friday's island. Well, so far it's clear. I suppose he decided to go native and stay there. Nothing quite as romantic as that, Mr. Valentine. No. Just before our plane took off, he said he was going back to speak to the stewardess. When we were in the air and he didn't come back, I investigated. And he wasn't aboard? He hadn't spoken to the stewardess. Just stepped off the plane and disappeared. Oh. Well, uh, what did you do? Wouldn't they turn back and pick him up? Well, the captain of the plane sent a radio message to the airport to locate him. He was there, all right. But he sent word back to me. What sort of word, Mrs. Craig? Just that I should continue on home, that he had some business to attend to on the island and would come on when he'd finished it. Hmm. What possible business could he have on a little Pacific island? Well, I have my suspicions. That's why I sent for you. Yeah. But uh, couldn't the authorities help you? If what I fear is true, I don't want the authorities to know about it. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I wonder if you could clear that up a little. Uh, by the way, what's your husband's business? Oh, he's a writer now. Well, wouldn't that explain his stay on the island, Mrs. Craig? Research, atmosphere, something? Not quite. You see, there's an organization, a very secret circle on Friday's Island, known only as the group. <laughs> Sounds like a communist setup. That's exactly what it is. Stanley found out, I don't know how, that the group has practically completed plans for taking over the entire area. Well, that all sounds plain. Obviously, your husband knows what would make a great magazine a newspaper story. I haven't told you one thing. Up until two months ago, my husband was in the Justice Department. He was relieved of his position because of what they term security reasons. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean now, Mrs. Craig. But perhaps you're just jumping to conclusions. I'd hoped so myself, Mr. Valentine, until yesterday. A man named Kester, one of the big powers in the communist movement in this country, called me. What did he say? 
He wanted to know if Stanley had sent him any messages through me. I said he hadn't. He told me to expect some and to hold them for him. So it all boils down to one thing. You feel your husband has gone in with the communists down there and that if he keeps up, he'll get in trouble. Yes. And you want me to make him see the light and come back to the States, is that right? Yes. I told you I love him. I don't want him to be disgraced. And I don't want him dead. Well, sometimes people with strong ideas are hard to convert you. I don't care how you get him to come back. That's up to you. Here's his address on the island. Will you try? All right, Mrs. Craig. I'll do my best to act like Frank Buck and bring him back alive. So this is Friday's Island, Brooksy. It's pretty, George. Blue skies and palm trees. Yeah, and slow-moving natives. Hard to believe any of these people could get excited enough to hatch up a commie plot. Mrs. Craig didn't say there were natives in the group. They could be foreigners. Yeah, probably are. Well, let's try and find the hotel and then call on Stanley Craig, huh? Hey, pardon, mister. Hmm? Oh, hello there. I hear you say you'd like to go to hotel. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right, if you'll direct us. Have carriage here. Happy take Mr. and Missy. Is it far? Uh, not far, just hot. Better you ride. Yes, let's, George. Okay, yeah, sure. Hop in, Brooksy. There you be. They'll send our baggage over later, I suppose, huh? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Say, uh, you don't know what hotel, Mr. There's only one hotel in Fort Hope, mister. It's called the International. Oh, Surprised they don't call it the International, Angel. <laughs> yes. What you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just a little private joke. Oh, joke. <laughs> we go. <laughs> George, what's the bell for? People know we come. Make pretty sound. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, boy. Uh, name is Leon. Leon Singh, at your service. Okay, Leon. Say, tell me, is this address far from the hotel? Let's see. Here it is. 17 Bank Street. Uh... 17 Bank Street? Yeah, that's right. Not far. Down by Waterfront. You want to go there? Yeah, but we'll go to the hotel and register first. You want to wait for me? Oh, yes, I wait, mister. I see you get to Bank Street very safe. This is house you want, 17. Yeah, all right. Wasn't very far, was it? No, not far. I make knock on door. Well, look, I don't need all this service. Well, thanks anyway. You know person who live here, maybe? No, not yet. Yes, what? Oh, hello. I'm looking for Stanley Craig. Mr. Craig is not in. Oh, well, uh, that's too bad. I have a message for him. Ah, well, uh, perhaps I can take it. Uh, step in, Mr. Valentine. Leon will wait. There is the young lady. Hmm? Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. You know who I am? Certainly I know. You and Miss Brooks arrived on the plane at 2 o'clock and registered at the International. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, who are you? Granif is my name. Nicholas Granif. Now, about the message for Mr. Craig. Who is it from? Why, uh, uh, it's from Kester, if that's any of your business. Oh, then it is very much my business. Where is it? Now, look, Buster, I'm delivering the message to Mr. Craig and no one else. It is important that I have it. If you do not wish to cooperate, uh, perhaps we will have to try other methods. Oh, I see. What's the idea of the gun? It is just to convince you. Uh-huh. Well, it wouldn't do you much good to carry through on that, especially since Miss Brooks knows just where I am and you don't know where the message is. Oh, Nicholas, please say the... Oh. In the future, I would thank you to knock before coming in, Anna. Who is this, Nicholas? What are you doing with the gun? This is Mr. Valentine. He's a messenger from our friend Kester in the States. Oh? What does he say? Well, the gentleman is uh, reticent about delivering the message, Anna. 
He insists on seeing Mr. Craig. Now, look, Buster, fun is fun. You know we're all in this together. I'm just following orders. Yes, yes, just following orders. Of course, Valentine. You're right. I admire your devotion to orders. Okay, thanks. This is where Craig lives, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, I want to see him. Where is he? Suppose you tell him, Mama. But he is... He is in jail, Mr. In jail? But why? We don't quite know. Some little charge. But can't can't the group do something about it? I believe so, Mr. Valentine. I believe so. Well, then why don't you get on it? I don't plan to spend much time here. I have other places to go. We shall start proceedings immediately. Um, tell me, Mr. Valentine, where would you like to meet Mr. Craig? I'll stay in my room at the hotel all evening. I suppose you know the number of the room. You know everything else. Oh, of course. The room is number 38. Uh, come, Anna. We shall visit the police so that Mr. Craig can keep his appointment. Just a minute. Yeah? Mr. Valentine? Yeah, that's right. I'm Stanley Craig. Oh, well, come in, come in. Thank you. Mr. Valentine, I understand you have a message for me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. From Kester? Well, uh, no. No, I'm afraid that was a little white lie. Then just why did you want to see me? Mr. Valentine, we don't go in for little white lies. No, no, I'm sure of that. I, I'm afraid the group wouldn't like that. You are quite right. Well? My message is from your wife, Mr. Craig. My wife? Is she all right? She's quite all right. She's just afraid that you're not. Oh, nonsense. You can see that I am. For the present, yes, I can. But how long can you go on? What do you mean by that? Mrs. Craig sent me to bring you home. She thought I might be able to reform you, I guess, but... Well, I see it's not easy to take anyone from the group. No. No, it isn't. Now, look, Craig. Why do you want to gamble like this? Why don't you come home to your wife? Forget the whole thing. I can't, Valentine. I'm in too deep. I've got to see it through. Tell her that. Well, I don't know what more I can say. Uh, there are cigarettes in this box? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Help yourself. Thanks, I will. You have a light? Yeah, sure, yeah. Thanks. Valentine, I had already guessed your mission. Now listen to me. I'm listening. I put a paper under the cigarettes in that box. If anything happens to me, read it. Do what it says. Wait a minute, I don't get it. We are very careful in the group, Valentine. We never know who may be listening. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Valentine... I suggest that you stay here in Port Hope for a few days. You may be able to deliver an important message back to the States for me. Well, uh, okay. See you later, I hope. Hmm. Well, you can't always win, I suppose. Pretty stupid way to earn a trip to the South Pacific. Good evening, hmm? Mr. Valentine. Oh, Granif. What were you doing out there on the balcony? Watching your conference with Mr. Craig. Then I suppose you heard our conversation. Though I tried very hard, unfortunately, no. I did hear, however, one important fact. Such as? That you did not bring a message from Kester, as you said. Only a message from the man's wife. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a try, wasn't it? You have done what you came here to do. There is a plane through for the States tomorrow morning. I expect you to take it. And if I refuse? <laughs> if you refuse, then this... Oh, now look, Buster. That's the second time you pulled a gun on me today. You will leave in the morning? No. George! And I'll relieve you of that gun. George! You have committed yourself. George! Think it over, Valentine, when you wake me. Oh! Just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. But first, a question. 
What happens when you put your foot down? On the accelerator. Do you feel a surge of power? Do you sail forward smoothly and effortlessly? Or has a one-feature gasoline got your car acting old before its time? Remember, the feel behind the wheel depends a lot on what's in the tank. So if habit has you buying a one-feature gas that's robbing you of real driving pleasure, then shift over now to the gasoline with all eight Chevron Supreme. Any gasoline can be made to stress one feature at the expense of others. Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities in correct balance. Full power, quick starting, fast warm-up, anti-knock, Vapor lock prevention, area blending, smooth acceleration, and economy mileage are all yours in every gallon of Chevron Supreme. Stop in soon and say, fill her up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're hired by a woman who believes her husband is in danger because, as an ex-employee of the Justice Department who lost his job because of communist ideas, he has become involved with an organization on a South Pacific island known as the Group. Your man doesn't seem willing to cooperate. And when he's left your hotel room, another character appears to order you off the island and impress his order with a knockout punch. If your name is George Valentine, you come to with a familiar voice in your ear. George. George, oh. darling, what happened? Oh, Brooksy, where did you come from? Did Craig do this to you, darling? I heard voices. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Craig didn't do it. It was that goon boy. Will you please make sense, George? Well, I'm trying to, Angel. I'm trying to. I should have used my right instead of my... Oh, hey, wait a minute. Will you please lie still, George, if you get up... A something... cigarette box. I'll get you a cigarette. I don't want a cigarette. Hey, throw the catch on that French door to the balcony, Angel. Well, uh, all right, but... Yeah, yeah, sure. At least he didn't get this. Pull the drapes, will you, Brooksy? All right, George. That's better. Okay, now, let's George, see. Don't you think that... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen to this. To... If anything should happen to me, please take possession of very important information hidden in my room. The instruction will be sufficient to guide you in its use. Use great caution. Graniff and the others will try to take it from you. I still hope to see you when the job is done, Craig. Well, what does that mean? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. If it's what I think it is, Mrs. Craig had real reason for worrying about her husband. I don't think I quite follow you, George. That's probably because I don't quite follow myself, I guess. But it's just a hunch. Come on, let's get out of here. Darling, where are we going? To the airport. But I haven't packed don't yet. don't have to this trip. I just want a little information. Information about what? Stanley Craig. I don't know who to trust in this place, but I think we'll take a chance on the boys at the airline. George, that's the same little man who drove us to the hotel. Yeah, it must be. I can't see him yet, but I couldn't mistake that voice. What's he doing here this time of night? Watching us, probably. You are out late, mister. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know. You make arrangement to leave on the plane tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, that's right, too. I go with you. Maybe I help. Oh, I think I can manage all right, Leon. Uh, you get in the carriage and stay with him, Brooksy. He can drive us back to the hotel. Well, all right, darling. Good, be right back. Hello there. What? Wake up, wake up. Come on, will you, old man? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. What is it? You the radio operator at this airport? Uh, uh, radio? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Radio operator, ticket agent. All right, all right. Of... I want to send a radiogram. I want you to send it for me. Oh, now, just a minute, bud. This is an airport. Official business only. Now, look, there's an office in the hotel... Suppose you, you don't wanna... trust anybody to send a very important message. Yeah? How important? Enough to affect the lives of a lot of people. Oh? All right, here you are. It's all written out for you. Think you can get it through for me? Department of Justice, Washington, D.C. That's right. Will you do it? Uh, sure. Good. And when you get an answer back, hang on to it until I come back for it, will you? Hey. 
This is dynamite, Mr... Valentine. You'll find the signature at the bottom. And here's something for your trouble. Oh, no, 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 sir. I, I wouldn't take that. I'll buy yourself a couple of hula skirts to send to your girl. I'll be back in a few hours. And let's hope you've got an answer. George? Yeah, Angel. Hello, mister. You got your tickets? Uh, yeah, sure, Leon. Plane be here tomorrow morning. Maybe nine o'clock. Yeah, sure. Hey, by the way, uh... Seen anything of Mr. Craig tonight? No, mister. Not since he come to your room in hotel. Oh, you knew that, huh? Oh, yes, mister. I drive him there. Uh-huh. And back? Oh, no, sir. Mr. Craig, he... Uh, he walked back. I'll bet. Okay, Leon, drive us back to the hotel and we'll get some rest. Yes, sir, mister. Yeah, Angel? Getting awfully sleepy around here. Couldn't I go to my room and go to sleep for a while? Mm. Oh, sure, sure, I'm sorry. Just because I have to sit up doesn't mean that we both have to. Well, why do you have to? Well, I'm going back down to the airport pretty soon. It's been several hours. The Washington offices would have been open quite a while. You mean an answer to your radio? That's right. Well, you go ahead, and I'll just... A minute. Yeah, who is it? Jim Riley, Mr. Valentine. From the airport. Oh, good. Okay, wait a second. Hi, Mr. Valentine. Hi. I thought I'd better bring this to you. Sounded important. Oh, good. Thanks, Jim. That's all right. Looks like you really did hit dynamite. Well, got to get back to the radio room. So long. Thanks. So long, Jim. Uh-huh. What is it, George? Dynamite, Angel, like the man said. Now I'm going to do a little snooping around Stanley Craig's room. You mean we are. Oh, everybody wants to get in the act. Okay, Angel, let's go. George, why do you suppose Stanley Craig isn't here in his room? I don't know, Angel. Unless he's unable to be, by reason of death. George, what do you mean? I mean this Graniff character must have found out what I found out by radio an hour ago. Craig wasn't a member of the group by choice, Brooksy. But he was a communist. Uh-uh. Don't believe everything you've told. He was fired from the Justice Department, yes, and for a reason. Because he was a communist? No, because they wanted the group to think he was. Now, if they've caught on, I think... George! Well, you're enjoying your work, Mr. Valentine. Graniff, you really get around, don't you? I make it my business to know what's going on, my friend. Come on in, Anna. I'm coming, Nicky. So, you're a smart young man who thinks he can take matters in his own hands, eh? How wrong you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right, Graniff. I suppose we'd better take your advice instead, huh? That plane out tomorrow morning? I'm afraid you are wrong about that, Valentine. I do not think you will need to make a reservation. George, what does he mean? Anna. Yes, Nicholas. You are quite adept at using a gun, are you not? Yes, but why do you ask me to do this? I am asking you to do nothing, Anna, except to keep a gun on these people. I'm going to the group. We will decide what to do with them and Craig. Oh, very well, Nicholas. You won't be long. I will be back in an hour. You will watch them well. Now, look here, Gran. If we haven't done anything, you know, we don't even know anything. You can't do this. It... I can't? You will see. There might be an accident, you know. Do as I say, Anna. Watch them carefully. I will be back in an hour. George. George, what are they going to do? Kill us, I guess. Guys like Granite play for keeps. Is he out of hearing, Anna? Yes, I'm sure he is. All right, then. Let's have it. Where's Craig? He's locked in a back room here. Can you get him out? Yes. Where are his papers? But George. Wait a minute, Brooksy, wait a minute. Where are they, Anna? Under that corner of the rug, under the chair. It's a fairly large envelope. Yeah, I figured that. Under this chair over here? Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. I've got it. But, Anna, I don't understand All right. why you. Let's get Craig and leave here as fast as we can. Mr. Valentine, yeah? you're doing a very brave thing. You're taking valuable papers. We're releasing Mr. Craig. Doesn't have to be so brave if we work fast. You'll never get away with it. You forget we are on an island. There is no way to escape. I took care of that. There are a couple of planes for charter out at the airport, you know. George, when did you do that? When I was down there earlier. Just thought it was a chance worth taking. You think Granite will be away for an hour? Almost. All right, which way to Craig? This way. Come with me. It's here. This is well, Anna and Mr. Valentine. Leon, what are you doing here? Granif told me to stay here. He did not trust anyone, even you, Anna. Get away from that door, Buster. Oh, 
no, mister. I stand guard at this door. And you will see I have a gun. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Look, Leon, would this much money mean anything to you? No amount of money would make me betray the group, Mr. Valentine. Ah, uh-huh, then maybe this would. <laughs> All right, Anna, get his gun. He'll be sleeping for a while. Yes, I get it. Craig, you in there? Yes, sir. Valentine. That's right. Come on. We've all got reservations on a plane for Tahiti. But, but George, how did you know that Anna was A lot was of time on... to talk in a plane, Angel. Let's go. Here's the easiest way I know to keep your tires safe. Let the car savers at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations keep your tires properly inflated. Switch them around every three to 5,000 miles for longer tire life. Inspect for nails and glass that might cause blowouts. Tire inspections are free, and tire switching is a car saver service you can purchase with your Chevron National Credit Card. Keep your tires safe. Stop in soon for a complete car saver tire checkup at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Now, if you two will excuse us for a moment, I'd like to check over these papers. Yeah, sure, Craig, go ahead. Come on, huh? Yes, Mr. Craig. We ought to be in Tahiti in about an hour. George. <laughs> oh, yeah, George. How did you have the idea that Anna would be with us? Oh, very simple, very simple. She winked at me. She did? Mm-hmm. The first time I saw her. I guess she knew I was a phony all along. Oh, well. I don't think you're a phony, darling. You don't? Thanks, Angel. You could wink at me, couldn't you? Hmm? Oh, sure. How's this? <laughs> I like it. Okay, I'll do it again tomorrow. Now, just sit back and relax. We've had a very busy day. Oh, George! Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ted DeCorsia was heard as Graniff, Byron Kane as Leon Singh, Tom McKee as Stan, and Gene Bates as Anna. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.